We're introducing you to five Branson performing families you'll want to get to know off and on stage. That's right. And also, we'll answer some mailbag questions you won't want to miss. Hi, I'm Matthew Boyce. And I'm CJ Newsom. And welcome to Branson's Best Shows. We've been performing in Branson for years, so we're excited to introduce to you five of our favorite performing families. That's right. And they're not just amazing on stage, but off stage as well. All right, CJ, let's start with one of my favorites, the Dutton family. Ah, yes. Great family. And my fa- one of my favorites, too, actually. Their theater is actually located on the 76th Strip, Branson's main thoroughfare, and they've been performing here in town for 25 years. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and they do have a very unique style of playing instruments, too. That landed them on America's Got Talent and Nickelodeon's America's Most Musical Family. Now, did you hear how they got started as musicians? Yes. Uh, didn't it involve cows? Well, well, their mom, Sheila, had heard from some dear friends that kids who worked the hardest as adults came from farms. Her friends say milking the cows every day and working hard as a family helped kids become smart and hardworking adults. Her husband, Dean, on the other hand, was a professor of economics, so he said that the farm idea was you know, out the window. <laughs> well, instead of milking cows, Sheila thought of playing music, specifically violins. She started them on violin lessons when they were three and five and made sure they practiced every morning. As the kids got older, they embraced instruments other than that. So as a result of convincing dad to dust off his old guitar, mom got her first bass lesson when she was 35. And the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, That's amazing. That's a great story. And all that hard work has really paid off, too, in a fantastic Branson show. Here's an example of what you'll hear at the Dutton Theater. That was great. Okay, so here's a question for you. Do you know who owned the theater before them? You know, I know it was Boxcar Willie, but I'm, I'm really not too familiar with him. Okay, to be fair, you are. You're pretty young. Uh, so Boxcar Willie was the 60th member of the Grand Old Opry. Got it. And a multiple gold and platinum recording ar- artist. He was known for his unique singing style and his ability to mimic the sound of a train horn. And he was also known as the world's favorite hobo. Um... He also performed on quite a few shows. Uh, He performed on Family Feud, The Gong Show, Nashville Now, and Hee Haw. And then after spending more than a decade on the road doing more than 300 shows a year, Boxcar and his wife moved to Branson where they purchased a theater that the Duttons now own and perform in. Now, they didn't just stop at the theater business. They actually own the Dutton Family Inn right behind their theater. Yeah, that's right. And it's really a nice place to stay, too. It's right there on the 76th Strip with back road access as well. And we put a link uh, in the show description down below. But also Abby's Tortoise Trap right next door, full of great fudge, ice cream, and like the name says, Tortoise Trap items like (laughs) Branson T-shirts, mugs, the like. Yeah, that's right. And they didn't stop there either. You can catch them in Mesa, Arizona, uh, in their theater uh, from December through April. So you can see them in Branson, Mesa, Arizona. But did you know you can actually see them every day in your living room, every week performing? Yeah, that's right. You can catch them on RFD TV in their show, The Duttons Through the Years. True, their show follows the Duttons' journey from a young family having fun together in their spare time to one of the country's most beloved entertainment groups. Yes, and you can catch them Tuesdays and Fridays on RFD TV. Some of you might have heard that the Duttons had a small fire on July 13th this year. No one was at the theater at the time, and no one was hurt, but unfortunately, the smoke damage was extensive, so the show had to close temporarily. Yeah. You know, there's one thing I really love about Branson shows and entertainers. It's the fact that we really care for one another. Uh, I know my husband Chris and I, we reached out to the Duttons, and many other theaters in town did as well. Yes, and Yakov actually had some great time slots available for them, and he jokingly said that he really thought Vladimir Putin was responsible for the fire at the Duttons. <laughs> so it was the least he could do to invite them to his theater. He wanted to help out. Hopefully they will be back at their theater soon for sure by the start of their 2023 season here in town. Mm. Wow. You know, so the Duttons have four brothers and sisters performing on stage with uh, all their parents and kids, and 
Uh, you would think that would be the biggest performing family in Branson. I really thought it would be. <laughs> but can't forget about the Hughes right. family. Okay, so they, they really do have a big family on stage. Yeah, yeah. There are over 50 amazing singers and dancers, musicians on stage every day. It's a lot of family. It really is. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, that's not how they got started. Okay, you're right. Yeah, I actually do know part of this. So they started in Branson at Silver Dollar City, the theme park here in town. Uh, and, and Yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. I remember seeing them out there. Uh, they were really one of my favorite acts out there. So as I know from then, I guess, uh, after they were asked to perform as special guests at this theme park, one of the five brothers said, if we're going to be performing as a performance group, we just might as well uh, do this for our full-time profession and go for it. Yeah. That's so right. they sold the family business. It was a fence company at the time out in Utah. They took a big leap. Yeah. That's right. And uh, after a bit at Silver Dollar City, they purchased the Roy Clark Celebrity Theater right across the street from the Dutton Theater. Uh, now, you do know who Roy Clark is, right, of Matthew? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yes. Now, Roy Clark wasn't the only performer in his theater. He would also bring in stars, Mel Tillis, Mickey Gilley, Glenn Campbell, and Jim Stafford. In fact, that's how a bunch of them ended up landing in Branson. So I guess you could say that the Hughes Theater is a bit of Branson history then. Yeah, that's right. And the Hughes family has continued in the tradition of bringing great shows to that stage. Uh, they've produced shows that will appeal to any audience member. You're right. They have their main show, the Hughes Music Show, which covers really it all from pop, rock, R&B, country, classical, Broadway, great patriotics, and even gospel music. Here's a clip of what you'll see at the Hughes. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you waited for. Been searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. Buried in your bones as an ache that you can't ignore. Taking your breath Stealing your mind And all that was real Is left behind Don't so fight it is coming for you Running at you It's only this moment Don't care what comes after Your fever dream Can't you see it getting closer Yes that's right. Me and my family We went to go see the show last year And it was a bunch of fun uh, It really is neat Seeing all those performers on stage at once And the guys They're super talented You won't want to miss them you know, they have the Hughes Brothers Country and Barbecue. This theater is so cool because you can see a great show and eat before the show starts right there. This show is a perfect example. Great barbecue, good old country western music backed by a live band. You'll have a blast watching it. Yeah, that's right. My my kids were so insistent. They really kept asking to see the Revive show, and I'm so glad we did. The show is produced by the brothers, but it really focuses on the talent of the Hughes kids, and they really are very talented. And their other show is only available November and December, and that, of course, is the Hughes Christmas Show, which has been voted the best Christmas show over 14 times here in <laughs> That's right. And what fun. They, I mean, this is a lot of fun. In fact, they always have a new baby Jesus to play in their production. So <laughs> it's... Now, we would like to take a moment and recognize our sponsoring theater, the Americana Theater, right in the heart of the 76 Strip. I want to tell you quickly about uh, some other great family shows we have here in the building. You know, I love talking about awesome 80s because, you know, it's something brand new to Branson, something different. You know, demographics are changing all the time here in time. We're getting younger right. families, younger people. And awesome 80s is great. It's music that never dies. Some yeah. great artists, Michael Jackson, Madonna, Cindy Lauper, George Michael, you know, hits from all those great bands. Journey. Oh, my gosh. You know, yeah. we hear these songs every single day. Well, and it reaches multiple generations, too. That's mm -hmm. what I like about it. Absolutely. A high energy dance show, lights, video screens going the whole time. It's Non-stop energy for two hours. Awesome 80s right here at the Americana Theater. But I also have to talk about a great family-friendly show, your show, C.J. Newsom's classic country and comedy. Yeah, I could be a little partial. But, right. but great classic country <laughs> Backed music. by an amazing band. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the, a fantastic mix of just great classics that you know, and then also a whole bunch of comedy mixed in because you need a laugh with 10-time Comedian of the Year, Terry Wayne Sanders, uh, doing what he does best and bring a smile to people's faces. Absolutely. If you guys haven't seen Terry yet, we actually have an episode previous to this one. If you want to scroll back, you haven't seen it yet. Terry Sanders, we did a great interview with him. Long form interview. Go up there and check it out. You really don't want to miss that one. And also something different this year too. Elvis story of a king. If you saw the Elvis movie in theaters this past year, uh, we go through the full life story of Elvis. Yeah. We don't miss a beat. We talk about all his high points from the fifties all the way through the seventies. So if you're an Elvis fan or if you want to learn more about him, we would love to have you come out and check out Elvis, 
Check out all the shows here at the Americana Theater. I think there's not a not a bad show in the room, especially right. all of our shows. I like to say they're all family friendly. I think you'll enjoy every single one That's of them. That's right. Now, if we want you to come back and check out all the shows here at the Americana Theater, so if you go on to our website to order tickets, you can type in the promo code BBS, abbreviated for Branson's Best Shows, BBS, go on there. You'll actually get 50% off your tickets to come see any of our shows here That's right. at the Americana. That's right. So if our audience isn't looking for the big productions, Matthew, what show would you suggest? Definitely the Petersons. They're per- like they're performing in the Little Opry Theater, which is located in the IMAX Entertainment Complex. Many people don't realize how unique the IMAX complex, IMAX complex is. In addition to shops, restaurants, movies, there's a hidden gem called the Little Opry Theater. 200 seats right in the back. Great concert venue. Absolutely. That's right. That was actually the first stage that I really performed on back in 2004. Really? Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful place to see an up close and personal show. And that's what the Petersons deliver on yeah. each time they hit the stage. They're a bluegrass and gospel group you won't want to miss. Here's a great clip of them right here. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. That makes me tend to leave my sleeping bag Load up and stash behind your couch And it's knowing I'm not shackled by forgotten words and bonds And the ink stands out of dry home so light That keeps you on the back row and spot the verse of my memory That keeps you ever gentle on my mind and it's not clinging to the rocks and ivy planted on their combs now that find me Or something that somebody said because they thought we'd fit together walking It's just knowing that the wound might be cursing or forgiving Oh, I just love their music. You know, it really is the heart of the Ozark Mountains. Um, so, you know, Matthew, you know why the Petersons started to play bluegrass, right? No, tell, tell me all about it. Yeah, so their dad was in the Air Force, and they moved around a lot, you know, and their travels around the country gave them a chance to see some of the different historical sites. And while they were at the Gettysburg Battlefield, there was a bluegrass festival going on. And their mom grew up listening to bluegrass, and their dad was a huge uh, fan of it as well. And that festival really changed their lives. Their dad just uh, sat around with the family, um, and he wanted to. He decided that he he didn't want to sit around watching TV or or playing video games with the family, but he wanted to play music with the family. And so that's what he did. He bought Ellen a banjo uh, right after that festival. Wow, so. Yeah, bluegrass gospel music, it's, it's such a great staple here in town. I, I think it's something, this show is fantastic. If you like bluegrass and gospel, I really think that, you know, this is the one for you to go check out. Absolutely, and the family is just as nice as they can be. Many people have discovered them on YouTube, and then we put a link uh, in our show notes as well as some that can be, definitely be put on your must-see list. Now, isn't one of the Petersons married to a member of the family we're about to talk about now? Yeah. The, uh, so Ellen Peterson is married to Michael Haygood. Uh, but I'm not going to miss the opportunity to talk to you about the amazing proposal that oh, happened. Great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so Ellen and Michael have been dating uh, since 2016. And after three years, Michael decided that it was time to propose. And in classic Michael Haygood fashion, uh, as you're going to see here pretty soon, uh, he he went all out, and so the proposal was a complete surprise to Ellen. Okay, Michael is a certified pilot, and he told her that they were going to be flying down to meet her dad and uncle for dinner down in Arkansas at Gaston's White River Resort. Okay, so the, and this was one of their favorite spots, kind of sentimental to the whole Peterson family, in fact, uh, because that's where their parents went on their first date. Uh, also, the Peterson kids were young when, when their dad would also fly them down to eat ice cream and watch planes take off and land on the on the grass runway. So, I mean, it's really just hugely sentimental. Now, Michael's brother, Patrick, helped with the proposal surprise and by pretending to kind of steal their plane away to, to lure Ellen out to the perfect spot in the middle of the runway. And there you have it. That's where Michael got down on one knee and asked Ellen to marry him. And 
No surprise. She said yes. Wow. So now is is Ellen going to join the Hay Goods now or is she- yeah, you know, they probably get this question all the time. Now, it, it, she's not leaving her family band, nor is she joining the Hay Goods, but uh, they, they're joining families, of course, but not shows. Well, I guess this is the perfect segue into the Hay Good family. Now, they're currently performing at the Clay Cooper Theater on the 76th Strip, right across from the Titanic Museum, but that's not where they started. No, no. Much like the Hughes, they started out at Silver Dollar City. Uh, whereas the Hughes brothers were pretty established musicians when they started out at Silver, let's just say that the Hay Goods were pretty much just getting their beginning. So in 1993, uh, the family moved to Branson, Missouri and began performing shows daily at Silver Dollar City. And for eight years, the family grew up at the theme park. I mean, performing six shows a day six days a week while taking music lessons, dance lessons, and completing their schoolwork as well. And then... um, Really, they grew a huge following at Silver Dollar City. And so back in 2001, the Haygood brothers decided it was time to take a giant leap and and open their own show on the Branson Strip. And they will tell you how hard it was to make that transition. Uh, Everyone sees their crowds today and thinks, so they had it so easy. Well, when they first opened uh, at Music City Center, they were playing to... 20, 30, maybe even 50 people uh, to start with. And now understand, they've been used to full capacity crowds at Silver Dollar City, too. And and they now they were playing to handfuls and couldn't even get a steady, well, they couldn't get a steady paycheck from a theme park. So luckily, they stuck with it and they began to rebuild their crowd uh, over time. And, and now at, at most of their shows sell out. You will definitely want to see the Hay Goods, their show is known for its special effects, amazing choreography, and overwhelming production. It is a wonderful show to see right here in Branson, Missouri. Here's a clip of what you'll experience. At- Get those hands together. Let's go. Come on. Come on. least on some of our favorite family shows is the Presleys. Talk about Branson history. Now, from my understanding, they started by playing in caves. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that was very popular back in the day before there was air conditioning, right? You know, so the cave stayed really nice and cool during the hot summer nights. And then naturally it had a great sound to it too. So it was a no brainer since the Ozark Hills were just covered in caves. But eventually they outgrew the caves and purchased a bit of property right outside of Branson. Now, CJ, did you ever hear how they chose the land that now is the heart of the 76th Strip? No, actually no. So well, rumor has it that they would sit in their truck and count cars that pass by different areas and this particular part of the strip of asphalt had the most cars okay really that's so, interesting so they weren't sure it was going to make it so instead of building the theater like a traditional theater with a, a slope towards the stage they actually built it completely flat that way if this silly idea didn't take off they could rent out the space as actually indoor boat storage <laughs> Well, good for Branson. The, they were right. It, they were a success. And what is so great about their show is a true, it, it's a true Branson show. It has the singers, a live band, and of course, most importantly, the comedians. And these aren't just any comedians. They are dyed in the wool hillbillies. I mean, Brant, when Branson got started, hillbillies were extremely popular. And you even had shows like the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, so it was a great idea. And it Still is today. Well, the Presley family is a show to see, and here is what you will see and hear when you visit the Presley Theater. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to Presley's Country Jubilee. It's great to have you here with us tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We've got a lot of new... Uh, 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 what's going on, Herkimer? Oh, I tell you, me and Cecil, we've been backstage watching one of them real-life UFO flying saucer shows. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You, you believe like in that kind of stuff? Or? Oh, not only do I believe it, I've seen them before. You have? Oh, yeah. I don't say much about it, but yeah. because... It's usually people like me that they appear to, you know. <laughs> but I will tell you, since okay. we're so much alike. All right. Listen to this. I'd been fishing all night long. Uh-huh. All right, and I came home, drove home, parked in the driveway right before daylight. Yeah. Parked in the driveway, walked up on the front porch, and that's when they first appeared to me. You saw them? Oh, flying saucers came at me, flying dishes, flying skillets, all kinds of things. <laughs> Patty hates me to fish all night, I'll tell you that, but that's right. Yeah, she even hit me with a UFO right in the head. I never knew it. Did you know somebody could throw a chair 150 yards? I didn't know she did. I'll tell you. Hey, it's all right. It's worth it, though. <laughs> Had a good night fishing. Oh, you did? You oh, catch yeah. up? I'll go back again. So, oh, yeah, I caught one. What'd you catch? You ain't going to believe it. Yeah, no, yeah. You're <laughs> stretching it a little no, bit. No, no, no. Listen, he was about that far from the bank and just about that long. <laughs> he was a pretty good one, though. I'll be, I'm going to look for Bigfoot. I'll be back after Yeah, look for Bigfoot. <laughs> Oh, her Um, So that is five great shows that you can see in Branson. The Duttons, the Hughes, the Petersons, the Haygoods, and the Presleys. And we've just scratched the surface. Now, I understand we have a few questions from the mailbag today. Yeah, that's right. Uh, We have a Jeffrey from Santa Barbara. Uh, So uh, he's asking, Matthew, what... uh, What do people mean here? There's no business like show business. Okay, so... (laughs) I would say, uh, no business like a show business. So, good and bad, I think you can take away from this. The good, I think you see a lot of great stories coming out of the theater and coming out of the people you meet and the experience. You get to feel the lights and feel the energy from the crowds, and you know you're touching someone every time you walk on this stage. Uh, But just in the fair share of good, you know, Show business has its reputation for having some bad moments too. You, you meet some of the wrong people, get wrapped up in the wrong, with the wrong situations, the wrong crowds, and you know you really can go down the wrong path with people. And entertainment can be pretty slimy. But in Branson, I feel like a lot of that kind of fades away. I have met so many great people since coming to Branson. Yeah. And some of my best friends, some great performers, some great fans that are now I consider my family. So really, in my eyes, there really is no business like show business because you can't have a job meet a new family, some great friends, all in a day's work. You know, yeah, right here. It's there incredible. really is no business like show business. Yeah. Now, CJ, it looks like you had a question from Sarah from Marshville. Ask, how can I learn to yodel? Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a loaded question. It, it, it certainly is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know per se how you can learn to yodel, uh, but I can tell you how I learned to yodel. And that's really uh, through mimicry. I mean, I've always thought of myself as kind of a mocking bird. Uh, whenever I would hear a song come on the radio, I would try and emulate that, probably similar to, um, you know, your... Um, imitators and and tribute artists basically but i would always try and mimic that sound and really with uh, with practice and and no social life i was able to uh, accomplish the yodeling effect actually at first it sounded a little awkward but my mother my folks kept in, encouraging me that i was on the on the right track cuz i i didn't quite know what i was doing at first so i would just say a lot of support from your family and um <laughs> and uh, lots of practice and and lots of uh, we what we don't, what we have now is the internet. And I tell you, you know, there's a whole lot of people you can learn from on the internet just by listening and, and practicing. So that's my advice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have a, a Spencer from Rhode Island who asked, should I go to college and learn how to perform in shows or should I just do it? Okay. Um, this is a very loaded question, Spencer. I'm going to tell you about it. So I went to college for two years. It was in a four-year program. Two years in, I decided that I wanted to learn in the field. And I just booked a touring show when I was 18. So from 18 to 20, I was taking classes while trying to maintain my touring schedule. And it was hard for me. And I felt like I was learning more on the road than what I was really doing 
in my classroom. So I made the difficult decision to break away from college. Now at the time, I didn't know if that was the best choice for me or not. I really had no clue. It could have been here nor there. But I just started working. I took every gig I could, said yes, said yes, said yes, learned everything I could. And then when I got the call about Branson, I decided that I should jump on the opportunity, did a one-off show here in town and learned that I loved Branson, moved down about a month later, got a job here at the Americana Theater, and I've been here ever since. And I uh, wouldn't replace the opportunities that I've, you know, I wouldn't trade them for the world. I really learned a lot. So I would say if you have the opportunity to work in the field uh, do or do some kind of trade program within performing or music, I would totally go for that. Um, if you want to go the college route, and you have the means to, and you have a family that is totally willing and supportive or wants to help you pay, or you have great means to help you pay a great scholarship, I mean, take the free vacation, buddy. Go do it. Go learn it. Go do it. But at the end of the day, for me, I'm I'm really hands-on. I think just going out and doing it was my best way. Um, But everyone's different. You have to really ask yourself what you want to do. So that's my... Short answer, I guess, of <laughs> what I think you should do. Yeah, I think um, that's a good answer. Let me see. We got looks. We got a, another one or two. This is Katie Girl twenty ten asked, "How do you balance your on stage career with your home life?" Now you don't. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yes, these are these are some tough questions. Yeah, um, I I would agree with your answer. Actually, yeah, sometimes you don't. I mean, you know, it's hard. As you continue in show business, you start to analyze what are your priorities, you know, and if you've got, you've got a husband, you've got children, uh, you know, you've got family in your life, I would say that that's always your priority, you know, as fun as entertainment is, it's still work, it's still, it's still your job, so um, I would say just try and make sure to keep that your focus, uh, because, you know, um, as every woman and, and housewife knows, there will always be plenty of work to be doing. You know, you're never going to be completely caught up. So try not to let that drive you crazy. Uh, but, you know, also have a very supportive uh, family around uh, that helps helps with the load. I think that helps a lot, you know. So uh, rely on your family to help you out with that as well. Yeah, it's confusing at times. You know, you never really know. And sometimes you get wrapped up. There's busy times of the year, busy shows, busy seasons. And, you know, sometimes you're spending long, long days at the theater, especially, you know, people like us, Chris and Jeff, our box office manager. We're here all the time, all summer long. So when it gets to our slower times, we really embrace our times to spend it with family. But it's definitely hard to to juggle a lot of it. That's a that's a good question. Yeah, that's a really really good question. Now we had a conversation. We had a conversation with world famous magician Rick Thomas. You will not want to miss. Click the link to watch that amazing interview. Also, make sure to subscribe and go to our website bransonsbestshows.com to find the latest show information and a brand new theater directory, so you can make sure you are contacting the theater directly when purchasing your tickets. But until next time, I'm Matthew Boyce. I'm C J Newsom, and we will continue to bring you Branson's best shows. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a good one.